Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 8.0, and today is day 23. So we are still inside of our Opportunities applet, and today we're going to dive into key details, key dates, and opportunity tags, and sort of reference how those are going to uh, allow us to do some additional activities such as reporting, sorting, filtering, etc. in the future. So let's dive back into Opportunities. That's our handshake icon here on the left hand side. And we're gonna go ahead and open the opportunity that we have previously created. It's in our cultivate phase of our listing pipeline. This is our good old fictional character, Marge and Homer Simpson. We're gonna open up this opportunity. And previously we talked about client updates and where this is. We talked about tasks and task checklists. Today we're gonna to focus on the detail tab and look through the information that's included or needs to be added inside of this tab. So first off, we've got the key information tab. Obviously, this is gonna have your opportunity type, name, ID. If a DA has already been loaded by your market center administrator, it would show the DA ID. It's got the contacts included and then what phase and stage. You can also see custom tags. So hold on, on to that for just a second we're gonna scroll down to key dates as well. Now, several of these key dates may have been added since the last time you were in command or at least watched one of these videos. Definitely wanted to take some time to go through the key dates section. So you can access the dates from this section. You can also access dates from the key information section. So I'm gonna click on the pencil next to key information. The first thing I told you to hold on to was custom tags. So what sort of tags would you create for an opportunity? Well, they're gonna be a little bit different than the tags that you might think of for a contact, right? So remember that a contact may end up buying or selling with you multiple times throughout your relationship with them. However, during this initial transaction, what sort of tags might apply? This might be a first time home buyer buying new construction with an FHA loan. In that case, those, trans those tags all refer to this transaction. So we might come in and say that these are first time home buyers. And you can see here, these are all tags that I have previously created, but let's go with first time home buyer. Uh, they're utilizing an FHA loan. Why would that be important? Well, you may wanna track at some point how many FHA or VA or conventional or jumbo or USDA loans that you have worked through on either the buy or sell side in a certain time period, using this tag will help you sort of navigate that. Say you have a VA buyer and they say, are you familiar with VA loans? It's one thing to say, yeah, I'm pretty familiar. It's another thing to say, absolutely. I've actually closed 37 VA based transactions where I was either the listing agent or buying agent in the last 24 months, right? You could figure all of that out using these tags. The last one we talked about was new construction. So if I type in new, you can see we actually don't have a tag for new construction yet as far as opportunity tags go. So to create a new tag for your opportunities, you can just type in the name that you want. You can see it did not show up in our dropdown. So we're gonna click on create new construction. And now we have a new tag added to this opportunity. So this opportunity will actually be searchable, filterable by three separate tags tags, excuse me, I'll show you how to get there when we go into our all opportunities tab in the future. Now moving a little bit further down this list, we're going to get into our dates section. So there's actually two sections here, you can see there's a section here at the top. And then it's sort of split up between the listing price and commission rate. And then we get to a new section down here at the bottom. This middle section is very important. Not that this section down here isn't. However, this first section actually triggers reports inside of your or goals, excuse me, inside of your reports tab. Now we'll get to that later in the challenge, but oftentimes as a heads up, there are seven speedometers inside of that goals section. And most agents will look at that and say, why are these blank? Why are they zero? I have closed multiple deals. I've had multiple appointments set, multiple held. I've written agreements, etc." all of these dates are going to fire those speedometers that you're going to find in the goals tab inside of reporting so definitely important that you put in when the appointment scheduled was <coughs> excuse me that's going to get you credit for an appointment set so let's say i scheduled it today and the appointment is for saturday 
So I schedule it for today. Let's fast forward to Saturday. The appointment actually happens. I would put in the appointment date for the 28th. And let's say that they wanna think about it Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We're fast forwarding to Monday and they actually sign the paperwork on Monday. So now we have an appointment set, an appointment kept, and an agreement signed. From there, when it goes under contract and then when it closes, we'll obviously get credit in the goals tab for contracts accepted or contracts basically, and then closings. So three very important or five very important dates that will trigger goals inside our reporting section. Down here, you can see additional important dates, things that you might want to be aware of. Now this is in our listing pipeline. So some of these dates are very specific to the listing pipeline. Obviously we're not gonna photograph or stage an, a buyer based opportunity, but so you can see we've got some additional dates around listing opportunities such as when are the photos scheduled for, when are we planning to stage the property, when's the target li go live date, when did we actually take it live, when is the listing agreement expire, uh, mutual acceptance date, that's different in every state, how we utilize that in Texas, that would just be basically our executed date, when did we execute the contract, uh, the home inspection, when is that scheduled for, when's the appraisal scheduled for, Escrow due date, escrow signing date. In Texas, we just call this closing, uh, but it might be escrow signing in your state, depending uh, roughly. You can see how you could use each one of these fields such that as we fill in all of this data, it would be readily available for us inside the key date section. You can see because we put in the appointment scheduled, appointment date, and agreement one dates, it starts to fill in this box with those actual dates as well. Down here at the bottom, we've got the financial information. We already put this in when we built out the actual opportunity. If for any reason that changes, you can always come back and edit it. The ownership also done when we first built the opportunity. And then you can see we've got a property section here. So the listing may not be live yet. However, we already know the address of the listing. You can see it right here, 123 Main Street, Springfield. So I can click on edit. This is going to be in the U.S. The address line is 123 Main Street. All right, and you're going to see it's going to start populating addresses based upon our connection to Google and Google Maps. So we're going to go ahead and put in Springfield. And this is Missouri. So we'll scroll down to our M, Springfield, Missouri. Uh, I may not know the county. That's not required. And then the zip postal code you would put in what that postal code is. I'm not sure if it's gonna allow us to save this because, well, it did. I don't believe there's a postal code in Missouri at 77493, but it let, it put us, let us put it in anyways. So important to note, make sure your details are 100% accurate as this is a fake address tied to our fake contacts here. Uh, earnest is an option for those of you that deposit your earnest money through your market center. Um, here in Texas, we deposit earnest money and option fee to the title company direct. But if your market center collects that, you may want to have a conversation with them and find out if they're using earnest. We're going to pause here and we're going to come back to parties to the transaction and the seller worksheet on the next video. And then we'll dive into a few more tabs, uh, especially the marketing tab, making the marketing of your listing much simpler and more straightforward using this tab. Stay tuned for that and parties to the transaction happening tomorrow. Hope you're all having a fantastic day and I'll look forward to speaking with you again real soon.